friends, it's Sarah and this is my first YouTube vlog. I want to build some consistency with my YouTube, so the plan's to upload a new video once every month. Just wish I can actually stick to the schedule. I still have a bit of a problem speaking easily and keeping my thoughts organized and structured in front of a camera, even if I had the points written down. So after I'd recorded this video two times and went back to listen to them, I felt that it could have been better. I still have a bit of a problem talking in front of a camera without rambling on and on and losing focus of the important points, so I redid the whole thing again and decided to follow a script for the most part. Even though scripting is pretty time consuming and it kind of takes away from the candidness of making a quote unquote vlog, but I decided to go with this until I can talk at a camera like a normal person. For now, I'm just standing next to my bedroom window like a weirdo, talking into my voice recorder because I don't have a microphone. So one of the main reasons I decided to make a vlog is to, in a way, hold myself accountable, push myself to work towards what I say I'll do, and hopefully others will hold me to it as well and come with me on this journey. Where am I now? I work a full-time job. I wake up no later than 7 a.m. to catch the bus and I'm back home between 6 and 6.30 p.m. And believe me when I say this job is time-consuming and exhausting. Sometimes I take the work home with me and other times I have to work on the weekends. Alongside my job, I also have to work on my graduate studies. Ask anyone who's done graduate studies and you'll know how soul-sucking and time-consuming they can be, especially if you're not particularly passionate about it. By default, graduate studies are very demanding in my country's universities and in my case, they ended up taking even longer for a variety of reasons. What should have taken a couple years or so ended up taking more than five and when you're juggling full-time work and graduate studies, there's only so many hours left in the week when you can work on your side gig. So it's no surprise that every year I ended up making changes to any plan for my art side hustle, most of which were just postponing things over and over. It was very frustrating. You'll probably ask, if the work is taking away too much of your time and energy, didn't you think about quitting and dedicating a few months purely to educating yourself and starting the business? I did, and several times I came very close to handing in my resignation. But every time, I'd stop myself at the last minute. Quitting to really focus on the side business can be incredibly useful, but not everybody can do it. Ultimately, I had to work in order to make money, so I can take courses and mentor under professional artists and buy books and buy the tools and the supplies I need. Another big obstacle is that my job isn't only mentally taxing, but it has nothing to do with art. It doesn't like relate to design or illustration or animation or even creative writing. This breeds another kind of exhaustion because it's like you have two switches inside your mind and you can't quite have the two switched on together at the same time. I go to my day job and it consumes me so much I can't even comprehend working on my art or planning my side hustle or anything. Then the switch takes time to finally flip off and the other switch now can flip on and I can begin something productive with my art gig. What I'm trying to say is that if your job's the type to take a huge mind space and requires continuous studying, you won't get much done and your brain will be too tired by noon to really be productive with your art business at night. I've heard many professional artists advise people who are trying to shift their career to intentionally take up jobs that don't take up so much mental energy and time space. And I definitely think they have a point. Just landing another job on the fly isn't easy though. I'm trying to work with my current situation and I have a little more hope now that my graduate studies are finally over. Something I admit I'm finding very challenging is the self-study part of this journey. I'm self-taught for the most part, and while this is a great life skill to have, the problem is that I feel like I'm working in a bubble, you know? I don't really have a network of like-minded people working in the industries I'm interested in. Another leak you have to wade through is all the ideas and concepts people still have about art-focused careers not being reliable or a practical source of income. My parents are still a bit afraid of me leaving my current work before finding something else that's stable. A best case scenario is for me to find a good art-related job that is relatively stable in order to validate my insistence on changing my career, but this isn't as easy as I thought it would be. Anyway, I plan on making videos more frequently as a way to hold myself accountable, and maybe this will make others hold me to my goal as well, and maybe someone out there will listen to this and think of their own similar situation. So what are the habits I'm trying to adopt during the typical week, you ask? 
Well, for starters, I'm trying to make use of any nook of time I can squeeze in some work, like preparing video scripts and starting on the sketches and thumbnails of projects. This is actually very hard to do, I know this from experience. One thing I found out to be very useful is to get yourself a smartphone. Having a tool belt of apps that serve your work, such as a photo editor, word processor, and so on, can motivate you to use whatever free time you have to get something done, no matter how small. And don't dismiss this idea right away. I was actually able to finish short stories and complete stock photo edits on my phone this way. By always being mindful of these projects and them existing unfinished on my phone and hopping in and out to finish them while commuting, waiting in line somewhere and so on, actually did help. Another thing I do is I leave a small sketchbook in my drawer at work or I keep one in my backpack. If you're like me and you don't jot your ideas down or concepts, the minute you get them, they float away and they never come back. When you have a lunch break or any other small pocket of time, take that sketchbook out and work on your project. Where I work, there is no set time for a break and there are days where I work non-stop till night and other days I can get an hour or two to myself. Even if there's no set routine, make it a point to use your sketchbook whenever you get some time. The minutes working daily really do eventually add up and there will always be days when you're incredibly productive and you get a lot done and other days where you just have to accept you only worked on your side hustle for 20 minutes. This next point is gonna be controversial to some but for over a year now I've been trying to reduce my responsibilities at work. These would only take up more of what little time you need for your side hustle, so if you can communicate with your manager that you don't want to get involved in certain tasks that you know will take up a lot of your time and energy, make sure to do that as soon as you can and be as clear as possible. Depending on the kind of person your manager is, you're the only one who can decide if it's a good idea to explain to them why you're doing what you're doing. If you do take up extra responsibilities, try your best to be selective about them. Do the jobs that can pour over some kind of benefit to the skill set you're trying to build for yourself. Don't make your life more difficult by taking up work that's even farther away from what you want to eventually work in. The next point directly relates to point number one about investing in a decent smartphone. If you're in a situation where you can't really do any work, then at the very least you can learn something new for a few minutes, or listen to the experiences of other professionals in the field you want to work in, and learn something from them. There are loads of educational applications on phones now that there is really little excuse to learn something while you're commuting. Good examples of education apps that I've used for years now are Udemy, LinkedIn Learning, Skillshare, and of course YouTube. Learning never ends and it's time-consuming and can really take away from what little time you already have to work on your side hustle. So make use of the time when you can't actually produce something. Like when you're on a bus, that's, when, that's a great time where you can actually open one of these apps and learn something. To keep things under control and manage the side hustle without losing my mind, I'll start off doing very specific jobs and releasing very specific products. It's better to start small and expand than to try doing everything at once and drop all the balls. I'm focusing on graphic design, illustration, storyboarding, visual development and creative writing. I have experience in these fields and so it makes sense to start with them and expand later. If you're past that point and you know exactly what you want and have the money to start hiring employees and moving on to big projects right away, that's great. But if you don't, then start with what you know. Gain the experience and the confidence and the reputation and then expand and begin hiring more people. For now, I'm just a one-man team and that's the way it'll be for a while. One last thing I want to add before I sign off, and this I consider is the most important advice for anyone wanting to start their side hustle, is to start learning today. Although I wasn't able yet to make a big transition, getting educated on both the technical aspects and the business aspects of starting an art side hustle whenever I could were invaluable in me gaining the knowledge and the confidence to start working more closely and aggressively on my art side hustle without regret. Time flies, so the earlier you learn, the faster you can start implementing and experimenting. 
and the later you wait, the harder it becomes. And if you're a perfectionist, I'm telling you, kill that part of you. This is what I had to do to get started. I couldn't for a long time because I thought I had to be brilliant at what I do if I wanted any chance of success. If you keep thinking like that, you're never gonna start. And trust me, you don't have to be great, you just have to be good. Anyhow, that's it for this video and I hope I didn't blab on for too long. Please like and subscribe and let me know if there's something you'd like me to talk about in an upcoming video. I'm gonna try this once a month routine, I'm gonna give it my all, so until next time and have a great week.